You know, I was spending some time uh, today with this book, Han Yu Jiao Cheng, which is a book that I use at university. If you've seen my recent video um, on languages, then you know that I've mentioned this. I gave links to the people who wish to learn Chinese. And I was, um, I was studying it. And as I was reading this, I was reading through this, um, it came to me that I think this is a big topic, the idea of uh, Chinese as a language, the very concept of Chinese as a language, as one single language. It's a big misconception that is so common out there that I think it's my turn as a linguist to, to try and bring some, some, some clarifications and trying to cl clear things up a little bit. So, um, the title is very you know, thought-provoking, I suppose, uh, and it's one of those titles that had a little bit of an overstatement um, of this. But, you see, when I say that Chinese doesn't exist, what I mean is that you don't have this popular idea that the entirety of the Chinese people, so we're talking over a billion, like 1.2, 1.3 billion people, uh, speaking one single language, Chinese. Uh, it's not the case. Uh, Chinese is a family of languages. Within Chinese there are loads of different languages that, I gotta say, the Chinese themselves call dialects, so it's not, it's not just a mistake or a misunderstanding made by people in the West. Of course there is also that, and, and I, will, I will underline a few things as well, coming from a Western perspective, but it is something that has been perpetuated as well by uh, the Chinese themselves. They call um, all their, their um, sub uh, versions of all the different versions of Chinese dialects and then Mandarin as the only actual language. Now, what's interesting to say though is that look at the geography of China. China is huge, it's immense and there are quite a few ethnic groups within it but regardless of the, of the several ethnicity, let's stick to language for a moment. So Mandarin Chinese, so the sort of Chinese that is normally studied at universities and that's the, that's the one that I, that I speak. Um, Mandarin Chinese which is based on the Beijing dialect and also well, it's sort of a mixture between the Beijing dialect as a basis um, and other forms of northern uh, dialects which, from, from which the, the standard Mandarin took uh, words and expressions from. Um, so it's not, you can't really say that is a, the most widely spoken language, it's the official language and it's a language that in our day and age the young people in China almost everywhere know how to speak. Maybe not always as a first language but it's definitely a language that has become um, a lingua franca in China uh, also because of media and, and the government pushing it etc. And it's also the native tongue of people in Taiwan. So as I was saying Mandarin Chinese it's based on Beijing and the northern dialects which are called Beifanghua but it's not exactly like people speak in Beijing in fact the city Beijing has got its own dialect which is different from standard of course it's closer to standard than dialects from other areas like for example the Shanghainese uh, and I will speak about Shanghainese uh, a little bit in, on this video as well because it's a shame that it's a, it's a dialect that it's disappearing now um, it is different. In fact, I like using the expression um, the uh, Beijing dialect from the capital. It's a sort of standard. The way you speak in the capital is one thing and the way you speak in the forbidden city or forbidden city style um, is another. So, which is, so already northern Chinese dialects are different from southern Chinese dialects even when they speak Mandarin. Okay, So even if you've got a Chinese person from, from the south and a Chinese person from the north and they're both speaking Mandarin Okay, they will sound different, they will have different accents and mostly the pronunciation will be different but for example, some, just to give you some ideas so you, you can have an idea even if you don't speak um, Chinese yourself um, Northern dialects add a lot the R sound it's slightly similar to the American English accent Okay, whereas southern dialects almost don't have this sound particularly at the end of words occasionally they have it at the beginning of words but not really at the end now, people in Beijing bring that to the next level because they, they add uh, the R sound almost everywhere, even in, in words that standard Mandarin uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't require the R sound to be. So, if you want to say, for example, in Chinese, I know how to play or I can play Chinese chess. Now, Chinese chess is Zhongguo Xiangqi. Okay, that's Chinese chess. So, in order to say I, I can play, you can say Wo Hui War Zhongguo Xiangqi. 
，我会玩儿。中国象棋 ，so you can see the sound 玩儿 means to play. And actually, in some northern areas,、um, including the city,、uh, the capital, sometimes they even change the w sound into a v sound, so it becomes 玩儿。我会玩儿。It's very northern. In the south, I think they would. They have their own words, of course. But even if they, even if they speak Mandarin, they would rather use one or hui one. Another difference is the presence of the shi sound.、Uh, so, for example, the verb to be is shi. So you can say 我是 or you can say, for example, 他、uh, 是我的老师 So she is my、uh, teacher. Or to say on top of something, you say 上 Okay, all of these sounds. Oh, for example, number four, number ten is shi. Now all these sounds become a si sound in Chinese, southern Chinese. So I am becomes wo si. Or for example, ta、uh, si wo de lao si. Okay, to say she is my 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 teacher. Water from shui in northern dialects becomes sui in southern dialects. So you've got quite a few differences.、So、these are just a few. Still, you also have separate languages. Now there are many.、Uh, to be honest, it depends on how you count them, and linguists always、uh, disagree with each other. But、um, you, you could say that, as far as Chinese languages are concerned, or dialects, if we wish, wish to use that term,、um, you have between seven to thirteen.、Uh, in the north alone, we've got six different variants of, Bay,、uh, of northern accents that are、uh, dialects that are loads of different kinds of Chinese. And the only thing in common they have is that they are all. Uh, tonal languages, and then there are all analytic languages.、And、for those of you who don't know what an analytic language is, an analytic language is a language that uses uses、uh, word helper、uh, rather than inflection. But apart from this, many different languages or dialects within the Chinese language family uh, are uh, mutually unintelligible, completely unintelligible, and yet we call them all Chinese. Let me give you an example. Um, Cantonese and Mandarin. Now, of course, Cantonese is spoken in the province of Canton. I will speak about the name Canton also in a minute, and、uh, in the city of Hong Kong. Okay, so it is spoken by a lot of people as their native tongue, and it's different from Mandarin, which is more of a northern、uh, way of speaking. Although, also provinces in the south of the、um, Republic of China、uh, speak Mandarin as well. All the way to the border to Canton, or how they say in Mandarin, Guangdong. Now, when I say mutually unintelligible, I mean that yes,、um, sometimes words sound similar. For example, hello in Mandarin Chinese, you say ni hao, ni hao. In uh, uh, Cantonese, it's something like ne ho, ne ho.、Uh, I don't speak Cantonese. I'd like to underline, so forgive me if I didn't pronounce it perfectly. But it's something on these lines. But if you look at the city of Hong Kong, well, when you call it Hong Kong in English, the pronunciation is actually based on Cantonese、um, because it has the, the name Hong Kong in English. I'm using English now.、Um, has nothing to do with the way they pronounce it in Mandarin. So, for example, in Mandarin, the city of Hong Kong is pronounced Xiangong, Xiangong, the city of.、Uh, well, you can you can translate it as、um, the harbor of. Perfumes. That, that was the literal translation. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. So you can tell that you know they are very different as languages. Very different. They are even more different than Italian and French, or Italian and Spanish, and sometimes even Italian and English. So this is why I personally, as a linguist, and that's my opinion, but I would not use the word Chinese when speaking about the language. I would only use it when speaking about. The people of China, and the reason why I, I wouldn't do that is again considering that Mandarin Chinese and Cantonese, and there are quite a few others, are so different. Then how can you say that they're both Chinese? It's like saying that Italian and Spanish are both European. So it's like, do you speak European?、Um, yeah, I speak European.、Oh, really? So, you know, it, it's exactly like that. It's exactly like that. And sometimes linguists say they even they differ even more than Romance languages. So even saying. When we say the word Chinese, we mean a family group similar to the the group of Romance languages. But sometimes some of these are even more different, and this is why I said sometimes it's like English and Italian. And again, you could say yeah, but 
still Mandarin is widely spread and a lot of people speak it um, so is, is it okay to say Chinese and intend just Mandarin again it's like saying European and just meaning English because you see English is a language which okay right if you I'm not gonna go political now just going geographically and just going geographical England is near it's near Europe okay and it's a language that was that sprouted in this area of the world and it has become the lingua franca now an Italian, a Spanish and a, and a Czech will most likely communicate in English and um, so it's very similar to what Mandarin Chinese is for uh, the people in China. So this is why I think it's important to remember that Chinese is a family group of languages okay? and it is important to underline that they are different, very different. Sometimes they can write things in a similar way, other times they can't. Um, most of the times a Cantonese speaker can read Mandarin and understand it even if they don't speak the language, but that's because of the nature, the ideograms, okay? And they, they basically drawing statements. And perhaps one day I will speak more about this because this, this topic needs an entirely different um, video because ideographic languages are rather complex, the characters are very complex to understand. So I would have to start from the very basics, it would take too long. But let's put aside writing and reading. Um, still, it's interesting, very interesting to, to take into consideration they are different. And sometimes we, we in the West, we sort of have this, um, we are guilty of thinking like, oh, the Chinese, they all look the same, and so they all speak the same, right? And sometimes I've seen people even do this all the way, including also Vietnam, including um, like Japan, they just call them all Chinese, and it's 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 uh, it's racist and it's wrong and it's very ignorant. And and even although yes, when you look at people in Europe or people in America, yes, you've got the blonde girl, the guy with blue eyes, the guy with black hair like me, the guy with a darker skin, and whiter skin. But you also have skin tone variation in China, and although they don't have the same uh, amount of color difference uh, that we have, um, most of them have black hair, but still uh, the kind of hair they have, if, yeah, if you look at it you might think, wow, age, Asian people they all have straight hair, but actually if you talk to an, a professional barber he will tell you no, there are still quite a lot of different varieties even within their straight hair, so they won't have curly hair perhaps like we, we can have in, in, in America or in Europe, but um, still they are different. But what's interesting is also the fact that they don't look all the same. In fact, in Chinese, they just use in Mandarin Chinese, for example, they, when they describe someone, if someone asks you, so, did you go out with that guy? Yes. What did he look like? You will use different parameters. They won't say he's got blonde hair or black hair. Of course, you're not focused. The language doesn't focus on colors, but uh, they will focus on the shape of the head. Now, that's something we don't do. So, if a European is, like an Italian, is describing someone, he will say, oh, she, she's tall, she's short, she's thin, she's got blonde hair, curly, wavy, straight. But if a Chinese is describing a, a Chinese girl, he will probably say, oh, she's got a round face, a more oval face, you know, that sort of thing, because, of course, they've got plenty of variation there. And to be honest, even eye shapes, there are a lot of different, uh, those are uh, more, um, they re really have like slits and others uh, it's like bigger and, and looks like more more like an almond there are loads of loads of different possibilities so uh, to, to finish since I mentioned Shang, uh, Shanghaiese or Shanghainese I'm sorry I don't know the actual English word the Shanghai uh, dialect it's a language that now is disappearing it belongs to a different group which is called Wu and it's uh, it's quite different from uh, the Beijing dialect very different to be honest and it's a shame that it's disappearing now, and it's disappearing because of the way you know Chinese government pushes the language, the standard man, uh, official language, um, and that's why uh, I think I think it's called Guanghua, if I'm not wrong. I'll have to double check. If not, I'll, we'll see. I'll, maybe I'll just write down something. I think it's called Guanghua. It's like the language of the officials that they are pushing Mandarin Chinese a lot, and so the younger the younger population is losing that. It's it's similar situation is is starting to happen in some regions of Italy, but Italy has been a country for only 150 years and all that around and that means that dialects are still very strong and are still the particular in southern regions uh, for, so for example Sicilian uh, people in Naples they still speak dialect um, I think I'm not sure about Rome 
uh, where the but, but still yeah no they still have their local expressions and uh, and and even in in the north I mean Friuli for example in Friulano Furlan uh, that's also still spoken by a lot of people although for example um, I have a lot of relatives up there not all of them uh, speak Furlan some do some don't um, in Sicily it's more common that people speak the dialect although sometimes you do have um, kids now day and age who are starting to lose some words and just that, that are original dialect and they're starting using other ones uh, other words so anyways it's something that unfortunately happens I say unfortunately because although it's good uh, that to have a standard language and it helps in a lot of situations and it helps with um, communication of course and many other things still it would be nice as a cultural heritage to keep the dialects as well and sort of have both that, that's a nice thing I think to have Anyway, so this is for today's video, a discussion on uh, Chinese as a language and how it's actually a family and sort of a myth I wanted to debunk. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and remember, the metaphor spread his wings. Zaijian! <laughs>